I'm John Brewer, President and CEO of the Billings Chamber, and welcome to our monthly call, everybody. As always, uh, to record your participation on this call, please just send me an email, john at billingschamber.com, and we'll know you're on the call. Um, as always, the webinar is recorded, and it'll be archived on the ACCE website. So uh, joining us today, as you all know, is Sarah Melby, and we all know her as Hero when we uh, communicate back and forth on our uh, Google group. So uh, Sarah is the hero that uh, communicates with us and archives all of our good information. Uh, she's the Director of Information and Research and is also the Manager of Hero. Um, and we're just talking before the call started. Sarah is a long distance runner. She participates in 50K runs and is considering a 100K run this summer. So more power to you, Sarah. Um, <laughs> it, it's yours. Take it away. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks, John. I, I just uh, love this group. Uh, just want to say an extra special thanks to you all for um, always contributing and answering questions and helping out so many other fellow members and helping each other. Uh, we really uh, think think the world of you all and just appreciate um, all that you do for the industry. So I think that also goes um, forward with the surveys, and I know. Many of you are, are STAR survey users, um, whether that's dynamic chamber benchmarking or even in previous years through our operations survey and salary surveys um, where we used to have that outside of dynamic chamber benchmarking. So just really want to say thanks for your participation and for sharing and continuing to share ideas about how you all are using um, dynamic chamber benchmarking and, uh, and actually the benchmark data. So, what I really wanted to do is spend a few minutes um, and just show you some of the new, um, if you haven't popped into dynamic chamber benchmarking, I'm going to show you a couple of the new resources that we have as well as um, fiscal year 2016 being open. And I want to show you the peer cluster for emerging cities. So we're trying to get the word out about um, our peer groups. We've established a filter option when you're running reports and comparisons. We've established a filter option specific to your peer group. So that means um, all chambers who are in emerging cities can actually run reports compared to um, the emerging cities peer cluster. So we've created all this behind the scenes. And um, it makes it should make it very easy for you. So we're uh, thanks to John for letting us use um, his chamber as an example. Um, we do also have a demonstration uh, example in dynamic chamber benchmarking. Um, if you'd like me to show that or um, any of your others, we can pop in and, and show your chamber as well on the screen. So thanks, John, for letting us use Billings here today. So when you first come in, of course, to dynamic chamber benchmarking, I think many of you have been in there. We still have the three main sections, chamber profile, operation survey, and salary survey. Um, right now, basically from February 1st through March 1st, we're beginning our big um, participation push. And that ties in with Chamber of the Year Award, which many of you have either been finalists or winners of um, over the past years, and you know how that Chamber of the Year application does require survey participation. So if you are thinking about it, um, go ahead and get numbers in now for uh, the Chamber of the Year application process. The deadline for participating with the Chamber of the Year um, application is, will be March 1st. So you'll want to get your uh, fiscal year 2016 numbers in Chamber Profile and Operations Survey if you're considering the Chamber of the Year. Um, so a couple of big questions we always get. The system does default to 2016 when you first log in, but you can always access the previous years here if you participated. Um, <clears throat> each entry for the survey sections will include a progress report. You just have to scroll down. But I really like this part so you can actually see how much your chamber has participated in the surveys over the years. And this impacts um, the different trend reports that are available. Um, we have a new trend report. I don't know if you all know about that. I'll show you that quickly, too. Um, and last week, we had a webinar with Kathy Height on benchmarking best practices. And some of you might have been on that call. We referred to a lot of trending data, um, looking at year over year, uh, previous year data. I see a question here. Oh, yeah, I can let me send. 
and uh, here. Um, okay, Linda, I just resent you your pin. Um, so when you first log in, it will default to 2016. Again, you can see your progress report for each survey section when you click into that section. Just keep in mind that the chamber profile is the beginning, um, and that's the required section. It does pull data um, from chamber profile for the calculations that we use in the reports in operations survey and salary survey. So that's why chamber profile is important to complete. And for many of you, I think most of you on the call are star users of dynamic chamber benchmarking, but you know that it's available 24-7. Every change that you make online um, in the data entry fields um, are, are live. So that means you can go in anytime, update your chamber's answers, for any of the years that are available. So 2016 is open and now available to participate in. Um, and we're still waiting for critical mass of participants. Again, we're going to begin this big push here for fiscal year 2016 um, over the next month. So our goal is to have enough chambers and to have you all help encourage each other in your region or your state to participate in the operations survey. Um, so that we can release the 2016 reports um, by March. That's what our goal. Um, so we're really aiming for that critical mass of participation. So because we don't have the 2016 reports yet available, I'm going to work with 2015 reports and just show you some of the different ones, especially this key performance indicators report card. Um, and then that trend report that I just mentioned, which shows data back to 2012. So to change your year, just use that uh, drop down on the right hand side. For any time you're in a um, section, each section has its own reports and charts. So in the operations survey, this is where the main um, you know, operations report, the mini membership statistics report, this um, trend report going back to 2012, and then the new chamber report card. They're all, they all live under the operations survey reports and charts tab. And then some of you, many of you have um, tried out some of the different filter options. And um, this is where I want to show you before I generate the trend report and the uh, key performance uh, chamber report card. Um, this is where you will go to apply the new Emerging Cities Peer Cluster. So anytime you want to apply a, a filter, just click uh, Change, and then scroll down to the Peer Cluster, and here's Emerging Cities and then you can apply that. So that's the trick, is just making sure you hit apply after you select the filter that you're interested in. Um, the way the filter works is a big database. So you can also um, look at emerging cities and then do a, a filter of revenue, or if you want to know um, organization function, if you want to look at emerging cities members that are chambers only or that have all three functions, you can do that. Um, the one note, and I know we've talked to several of you um, based on your questions, the one note about the filters is, again, because it's a big database, you can narrow down your, your results too narrow. So if that happens, you may get a message saying not enough chambers to apply um, or to run the report. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're going to have plenty of chambers to compare to with the Emerging Cities um, peer cluster group, so we can see that there are 67 accounts. If you ever want to know um, who these members are, you can just email HERO, and it's H-E-R-O at ACCE.org, as you know, um, and ask us for that list. In fact, what I may do is, after this webinar, follow up with the 67 chamber names here and send you that. You can also get um, from the network section of our website, you can go to the community peer groups and then see the roster here under Emerging Cities. So again, that's specific to your peer group. Um, so now let's just, so the Chamber Operations Report is the one you're probably most familiar with. That's the PowerPoint slide deck. It will um, show where your chamber is fitting in with um, the other percentile. Again, this is only comparing your chamber to the Emerging Cities group. So it's handy to note. Um, so I'll pull that one up really quick, as well as the trend report. And um, the operations report, as you know, is fairly uh, lengthy, over 30 slides. 
Um, again, it does show exactly your chamber. It's going to show the cover cover sheet, which has your chamber name, and then showing your um, which peer cluster you've applied or filter you've applied. So um, the way the uh, PowerPoint slides work, they are completely showing your chamber, and then again the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentile in a mix of bar charts and um, uh, line line graphs. So your chamber, when in a bar chart, will show up in um, yellow, and the other percentile will show up in uh, blue here. So just a couple of notes. I'm going to minimize that. We can always pull that up when you're talking more when you start sharing about how you're using benchmarking. So I'll leave that up, for example. I'm going to download also the trend report. And this one is the one that's fairly new. Um, I don't think we've used, highlighted it that much. And um, just want to definitely highlight that here since Kathy Height mentioned it last week. Um, it is a shorter, abbreviated slide deck. Um, still 18 slides, um, and it's showing your trend patterns from 2012 through 2015. Now, when we release 2016 reports here in a couple of months, um, it will actually add in uh, 2016. So this is a great way to see your trend line. Uh, again, your chamber will be in blue, and then um, the other percentiles comparing, again, with the emerging cities will be in the other colors. So the trend reports are showing um, kind of select uh, data points, again, chamber members per chamber FTE, uh, revenue per chamber FTE, personnel expenses, member retention, first year member retention, uh, retention in dollars, total membership accounts, member uh, market penetration, revenue per chamber member, uh, member dues investments, um, that's in dollar figures, canceled memberships, total chamber revenue trends, and fundraising revenue, um, and a couple others in here. So you can download that for your chamber. Um, and again, the, mem the membership statistics report is about 16 slides, and that's just taken directly from chamber operations report, and it's only those membership stats. <clears throat> and then the newest one we just released is the Chamber Report Card. So that's also what we're calling KPI, or Key Performance Indicators. And we developed this one uh, based on uh, Chamber's request. So this is a kind of a great point to note that we do listen to your requests and often can um, ma make them happen, in whether it's in Heroes, other resources, or dynamic Chamber benchmarking. So the way this one works, cover sheet, and then key performance indicators, one page. So it includes staffing, um, membership, and then finance. And um, then it will show your chamber, your percentile, and then the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles. And again, this is just comparing to the emerging cities um, subset of the uh, survey participants for fiscal year 2015. So we'll have the same thing available here for fiscal year 2016. Um, we really like um, this section here on, on membership because it's really quick and easy to use. We'll talk here in a little bit more about dashboard reports. And I know John has um, some great examples from his chamber as well as some others uh, of you. Um, I know, I don't know if Tony Felker is on the call. Um, a couple of others of you have had dashboard reports. So this is, can be viewed as kind of a dashboard, um, an annual dashboard report example, um, but you can easily pull these numbers into your own dashboard reports if you're using Excel or another type of format. Um, and you can pull, pull them into your board reports, et cetera. So um, I think that's um, all I really wanted to highlight as far as the new reports, the, the filter option. Um, and I would love to open this up now to see how you all are using the benchmarking data, it, whether it's retreats, lobbying, for salary increases, um, dashboards, et cetera. So John um, and others, would you like to kind of kick this off since we were using your reports, John? Can I put you yeah. on the spotlight? <laughs> Absolutely. And also, I, I know Linda has been trying to get her speaking uh, element to work, and I'm not sure that she has yet. Linda, are you there? Linda? She yeah, has been silent. 
Okay, yeah, I just okay. sent over a, um, Sarah, I just sent over something to you, so hopefully you saw that and we can get her okay. activated. The okay. Pound 40. Ah, is that Linda? Was that you, Linda? No, I don't, um, I don't Linda? think she's on yet. Okay, there is, I'm going to take a quick screenshot. Um, what you will see on your GoToWebinar panel, I'm going to just move this over. So, Linda, if you can see this, you, your microphone here might be muted. It might have a little X through it. Just click this, this uh, microphone icon, and that hopefully will help. I, it does show that you are unmuted on my, um, on my side. So I'll show you what, what you look like here. Here's Linda. You show um, that you're unmuted. And I show like a couple others with this little gray. That means you're self-muted. So thanks for doing doing that. Um, let me see. Okay, we'll keep working on that. John, would you like to take it away? I sure will. And just a reminder: if you have not sent me an email yet to let me know you're on the call, please do. And I've got dashboard samples that people have sent and that are housed also at, at Hero that I'd like to send you back if you're interested. Let me know. Uh, and I'll forward those to you. But uh, you know, this dynamic benchmarking process has been just a phenomenal tool for us here in Billings. And uh, it can be time consuming. I've got a couple of staff members in uh, different departments and membership and my COO who uh, is usually tasked with uh, populating the information. And uh, we do it every year. Um, as you said, Sarah, you know, it's required to be part of the uh, Chamber of the Year. Uh, nomination process, so we did it for that. But every year I do gather information from this site um, and present it to my board of directors as kind of a year-end summary. I look at our market penetration, uh, the dues per member cost, our sales, our retention efforts, and I, I first give them a background of, of um, through a PowerPoint presentation on uh, kind of a local snapshot of just how we're doing in general. And then I compare to our peer set. And I believe, uh, Sarah, that you can really divide out that information and cross-tabulate into a lot of detail, whether it's through the budget that you have in your chamber, the number of members, your city size, population. Um, and so every year I do that for the board. And then for the executive committee on an annual basis, as I'm being evaluated, um, I'll go through the uh, CEO salary information and also, uh, through the cross-tabulation, provide them a couple of different cross-sections of uh, peer uh, salaries. And it's been very helpful and has really helped me build a strong case over the years. So thank you all who participate in that. And you know, one of the goals is obviously to get more people to participate there so the information continues to be more valuable. Um, Linda or uh, Kelly, would you share kind of how you use it? Sure. Last year, I well, I'm sure there's some people that don't want to, me to tell that they did all this work for me with the benchmarking. But many of you know that uh, in 2015, we lost our contract with the city for the CVB and Main Street. So I had completed the 2012, 13, and 14 benchmarking, and it had always and it had always included the CVB piece. So I called Tinja and I said, you know, I'm, here's where I'm struggling. I need to be able to look at our organization without the contract, have, be able to talk with my team and our executive board about, you know, how our organization is going to look post October 1, 2015. And I can tell you the benchmarking piece, especially when I utilize the organizational structure, it was really important. So. Let me share just some things that, that we highlighted. Um, I was able to look at how many organizations, and I used throughout the country, not our peer group, but throughout the country, had lost major functions to other organizations. And then the ACCE team actually gave me the names of those chambers so that I could reach out to them and have some really honest conversations of the struggles we were experiencing, how they're working through it, how they manage their board, how they communicated with their staff members, because it was a really rocky time emotionally, and it was up to me 
to remain positive, uh, hopeful, and be honest about our local predicament. And the organizational structure piece definitely helped me think through that process. Um, we could reach out to the 60% of chambers who ha didn't have a CVB because until October 1, 2015, the 29 years I'd been in the industry at that point, I had never run a chamber that did not have the CVB component. So this was a whole new world for me. So again, staff let me find out. I was able to pull chambers by similar staff size and budget size, and they helped me identify who those organizations were that, again, I could reach out to and have some really frank conversations with. From an HR perspective, um, again, this was huge because we were totally reevaluating our organization. We were looking at our wages. We were looking at our benefits. We were looking at the cost of the new organizational budget um, because we had always had the luxury of having our dues revenue with our contracts made up about 23% of our overall budget. Without uh, the contracts, it immediately jumped to 31%. So, you know, it, when you start looking at, at losing nearly a million dollars out of your, your life, you have to start evaluating every piece of the organization. So the HR pieces within the benchmarking survey were extremely beneficial. Um, board members started asking questions that they had never asked before since I've been at this chamber, and I start my 12th year at this chamber in April. So for the first time, they cared about our retention rate. Now, we've uh, monitored our retention rate through WACE. They have a, a survey they do every June, and then we've utilized since 2012 ACCE benchmarking. So I was able to pull data and demonstrate our retention rate. I was able to discuss the revenue generation that each staff member brings to the team. I was able to show them how our organization was made up, what industry clusters, how many employees, and then to be able to contrast that against the peer communities. So several of you know that I use you when I'm benchmarking, and so I was literally able to narrow some of that down and pull that data and demonstrate that to the board. Um, the other piece that was very important was in 2015, we had started working on our foundation. And because that question is a part of the organizational structure, how many chambers have foundations, I was able to show that since 2012, that number has grown immensely because many of us are using our foundations as ways to raise that below the line dollars within our, within our organization. So for me, you know, 2015, um, was really important in utilizing the benchmarking survey. To be really honest, I had looked at it as a pain in the butt to complete. Very similar to John's, I was thrilled to see that my brother from another mother had almost the exact same number of questions completed in 2012, 13, 14, and 15 because, to be honest, I wanted to be the one that completed this survey to make sure it was answered the same way each year. Now, and it took a lot of time. This year, I'm going to bring someone in, uh, one of my team members in with me to help complete the survey and show her how I've done it over the years. To, because it is a tremendous, for me, it was a tremendous amount of work to take our financials, break it down in order to accomplish what the survey asked. And that's what I have, John. Thank you. Sister from another mister, I guess, or but <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Um, and Linda, unfortunately, still isn't able to connect with us, but I'd love to hear from others that have experience with or ways that you're using this tool that could benefit the rest of us. Or questions for Kelly? Or um, well, this is Christine in Brandon, Florida. Um, this uh, topic is so relevant to me right now, I can't even thank you enough, because um, we have had a few struggles in the past few years, and so the strategic planning process has been, um, and for all intents and purposes, halted. Um, but now our board is ready to start tackling a new strategic plan, and they're looking to me for 
most of these types of charts and information um, for ourselves, and then I'm encouraging them to use it to see what other chambers are like. I, I'm trying to get them to focus not just on us, but where are other chambers at and where should we be striving for? So um, we're going to be using it very heavily in our strategic planning process. Have any of you, this is, thanks John, this is Sarah too, have any of you um, others used dynamic chamber benchmarking in your strategic planning? I'm thinking, I, I think uh, Marianne uh, from Glenwood just got in, um, Marianne if you can uh, talk, I think I just unmuted you, if you can weigh in on strategic planning or annual reports and how you've used the operations survey data. And for those of you who are experiencing any audio um, challenges, the way the GoToWebinar works is it puts you on mute when you first come in. So I've sent audio pins um, to, I believe, everybody here. Um, you may be on mute on your phone, so just double check that. <clears throat> or there's a little green icon, a microphone icon, on your GoToWebinar panel. If that has a line through that, just click that, and then hopefully it will activate your microphone. Yeah, this is uh, Jed Metzger with the uh, Lima Allen County Chamber of Commerce, and we use it annually at our strategic planning stations and uh, to evaluate our operations throughout the year. And we do comparative analysis where we're at throughout the year um, in comparison to the uh, benchmarking that we actually do, and sometimes it's even a little higher than, you know, uh, the, let's say 92% retention. Ours, we have a stretch goal. So, uh, yes, we find it very useful. How about creative uses? Um, are any of you, I know we'll talk here more about dashboards, but are you using uh, retention, uh, for example, the slides? Are you pulling those slides directly into your board reports or your other your dashboard reports? Are you just using numbers like the straight you know numbers that we're seeing on the key performance indicators? What seems to be the you know most helpful way to get the data to your constituents? This is John. I use both. Actually, I've used the slides that you've presented for us, and it gives a nice snapshot of a big picture overview. Uh, but I also like to go in and kind of reformat to the style of, of some other reports that I'm putting together. So it's nice to have that flexibility. It's right there prepared for us to just push a button and show it. Um, but just the flexibility of, of grabbing numbers is also very helpful. Mm -hmm. And some of you have sent in your example to um, to Hero, and what's really interesting is we just got a chat from Dynamic Chamber Benchmarking coming in. I'm not sure if that's any of you <laughs> or someone else, but we do have that chat for this. Um, so we in uh, the information section of the ACCE website, we do have several different examples um, of how you're incorporating the survey data, operations data, into uh, the under samples library, and then we have a section on benchmarking. So this is growing, and we definitely welcome your examples um, if you want to share. There's um, benchmarking examples here, um, so Glenwood Springs is here, Marianne. Um, there's also several dashboard reports, and that is also growing thanks to John and several of you. So I'm going to just show you the, the dashboard category here, the dashboard report. So if you Sarah, either go I to benchmarking. Sarah, it's John. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt the delay. Um, but I just, everybody who's sending me their email and requesting, I'm sending uh, about six or seven samples along with the link uh, for mm -hmm. Uh, the hero site on the dashboard. So again, John at billingschamber.com if anybody wants to get that information. Wonderful. Thanks, John.
And here's uh, John's latest. I know he just sent those out too, but they're um, loaded up into samples. So, and here's uh, Tony um, at Frisco Chamber. Um, several others of you have have submitted samples, so those are definitely welcome. And just a reminder, Samples Library is um, members only. It's password protected. So someone outside of ACCE, if they don't have an ACCE login, they can't see your sample. They can see a summary, which is this summary, but they can't actually download the um, example piece. So if that gives you uh, peace of mind. Um, OK, so any, anyone else? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, I, I think, guess, John, take it yeah, away. <laughs> sure. I, somebody's having fun over there. Um, as we transition into the, the discussion of monthly dashboards, um, I'd sure like to continue to see other samples that are out there and have them, again, populated on the HERO site. But um, I produce three different dashboards, for one for our chamber board. We also manage visit billings, the tourism arm of the chamber and the uh, Visit Southeast Montana Tourism Region. It's 13 counties and two Indian reservations. So for each of those boards, I produce a different dashboard. And we really start that dashboard development process at the beginning of the year when uh, I meet with our executive committee and we kind of lay out the priorities for the upcoming year and plug numbers into those priorities, whether it has to do with um, membership growth, uh, reducing the number of cancellations. You know, somebody said earlier that stretch goal of, for us of, uh, of retention and market penetration. So we'll establish some of those goals at the start of the year and then do our best job to spread that out month by month realistically as to when we, you know, for instance, if we say uh, our goal this year for membership is uh, 84 new members, or I'm sorry, 170 new members. We'll do our best based on history to spread those month by month so each month our board can see how we're pacing. And we actually call the report, our dashboard is called the PACE report. So our board can see how we pace month to month to that annual goal. So for instance, this last month, uh, we had a goal of hitting 14 new members um, with a value of uh, $6,000. And then we show the board actually what we hit that month and cumulative uh, what that is year to date. So the board then keeps us accountable uh, with those measurable objectives on a month to month basis. We don't spend a lot of time talking about the PACE report month to month unless there's something that's kind of off the charts and out of the norm. Uh, then we'll kind of dig in a little bit and explain why we're doing so good or what challenges we're experiencing. So for the, for the chamber, traditional tr chamber uh, piece, we use those elements as well as uh, we, we look at our marketing efforts locally and see what kind of uh, free publicity that we're getting. And we, we have a service that we use for that that identifies the number of eyeballs that are seeing all of the, the press information that we're sending out. For our tourism group, uh, we look at things such as a uh, stakeholder survey that we do on a regular basis and room demand um, and uh, uh, visits to the Facebook site. and uh, and in website, so that's kind of our process. John? Yes. A uh, question, John, on the uh, goals regarding um, number of new members and dollar value, um, and I'd like to ask the whole group: Are you primarily measuring on dollars or on numbers? Because we're having that debate right now. I budget based on on dollars. Um, not on numbers of members as far as whether we're hitting our goal. And ours, ironically, is the same as yours. <laughs> oh, and, I, and we do both. So I look at number of cancellations, both the number of members, the number of accounts, as well as the dollar volume that we lose. So uh, as an example, our goal is no more than 145 cancellations this year with a $56,000 value. So this last month, the goal was to only lose 12 members, we lost 11, and to only lose uh, $4,600 of value in those lost members, and we actually lost 4800 So we do check both of those because they're both important numbers. Same with our new member goal. What if you That's hit important. one and not the other? Well, I think that What's what that? I like about doing both of them, John, is having just gone through reaccreditation, 
that's one of the new questions from five years ago. And by having that as another feature in the ACCE benchmarking survey, or you know, setting up our dashboards, it better aligns our info, makes it easy easier to retrieve when going through re, uh, reaccreditation or accreditation for the first time. So I loved your chart. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I've also been sending out samples from Daytona. She sent me just a, a beautiful matrix. Uh, mine is very black and white and in a, in a grid. Um, and in Daytona, they've, Nancy puts a lot of color to hers and has graphs that makes it much more appealing for the board to see in a, in a glance how they're actually pacing. So I'm looking at transferring a little bit uh, more towards that uh, visual representation of, of the dashboard. Who else has things about their dashboard that are working well or questions about how to establish a da dashboard, anything? I'm actually, this is Sarah again, I'm actually curious how many of you are, um, have dashboards in place right now or are looking at that for this new um, new budget year fiscal year that you're moving into. And if you're trying this to is, talk, um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, this is uh, Jed Maxker again from Lima, uh, mm -hmm. Ohio. Yes, we started this year uh, about halfway through the year, so I'm really interested in, uh, I see John just sent me the information. Um, and tracking it like you're doing it using the report so we have something that we can base it off of. Um, so this is our first attempt, but we want to get into some better measurables. And I think the monthly measurables is a, a great idea because there's different times of the year that works out better, it seems, to members and non-members when we do our members. Again, I apologize for those who are on the call just biting at the, at the bit to, to talk and aren't able to. I'm getting a handful of emails from people that are trying, so we apologize for that. <laughs> Hopefully you're seeing the value and the email exchanges we're having is, is beneficial. And if you have the GoToWebinar um, panel on your screen, that should be, um, if, you're, if you dialed in by web, so this will be for if you have the GoTo webinar on your on your computer screen, you will see. Um, I'll take another screenshot. <clears throat> I'm not sure if Linda is on here. Um, if you can see this, but this is the little microphone that you'll see on your GoTo webinar panel. It, if it has a, a red or a gray, I think um, symbol through it, click on that. Click on that little um, icon button, and that should free you up because I'm showing that everybody here has um, the audio. So, or Did you give her the dial-in? The dial-in number? The dial because that, that only works if your computer has a microphone in it, which mine does not. So I always have to use the phone and that could be the issue if they just use the dial-in number and use the phone for their audio and just look at the pretty pictures. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. Good point. Um, that was Christine, correct? Yes. Um, the screen the screen now shows the phone number, so it's, if you can dial one, you have to dial the one, 415-655-0060, and then plug in the access code 872-173-623. Okay, anyone, anyone else, um, let's see here, let me try one of these. We do apologize. Um, Anybody and, else with, uh, with, able to speak, have any, any comments on dashboards, measurables? Um, we're using um, a chart right now for membership tracking, and it's um, a year-over-year -year chart at the present moment that has um, number of new members, new member dollars, renewal numbers, renewal dollars 
drop numbers and drop dollars on it. And it, and then it keeps a running total um, year to date. And um, what we've been asked to do is convert that into a different series of graphs. So um, we're looking at what format we want to use to present the data. That's that's very good. Uh, well, another thing too, speaking of different formats to use that data, I'm looking at Linda uh, Raby's uh, uh, dashboard from Rapid City, and she does a really nice job showing uh, the number of members that they've lost and how many years they have been members. It paints a solid picture of you know what we know that the, the longer you're a member, the less chance there is you're going to drop. But those one to three year members. Um, are rather significant, and that's, that's valuable information. The way she displays it's very nice. So let's let's do this one more time. Uh, my email john at billingschamber dot com. If you'd like those uh, links and uh, samples from others with their dashboards, um, Kelly, you had. Uh, so I think you were just on an executive call with the ACCE board, and um, I think we're we're not only losing Mick as we talked about in his retirement last month, uh, but somebody else is departing ACCE, and I was hoping you could share that with everybody. Um, Ian Scott has, and probably one of the ACCE team members can tell us more. Ian has accepted a position. Um, with the Charles, I believe, isn't it the Charleston Chamber? I'm just now drawing a blank. Yes, it is. Yeah, you're correct. It's, it's Charleston, okay. yep. So, you know, Ian has been a huge supporter of our group and to many of us over the years. And I just hope that you guys will reach out to Ian and let him know how valuable he has been to ACCE and that we are looking forward to working with him as a, uh, you know, in a different capacity. But at least he's staying in the industry, and I'm really excited for his new opportunity. And I hope you'll wish him the very best. Agreed. He's been such an asset with the Horizons Initiative and so much else he's done for us over the years that he deserves a pretty big shindig for a going away party. So make sure you reach out to him and just thank him for all he's done for us. And I'm sure we'll be seeing him in Nashville wearing one hat or another. Anything else in general uh, you want to anybody has on their mind that they want to throw out? Okay. I'm going to uh, send an email. Send, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, John, I just sent over something I did for our board retreat, which was a full year's membership analysis um, year over year, because I've only been here two years. But it shows the types of things that my board was asking for as far as what industries um, make up our membership, what, and then um, size of company, geography, and so forth, and then the same thing when we drop uh, members. And so you'll see there's two sections to it, so if that's of any help to anyone as far as uh, for a retreat type format, um, they might be able to use. You know, I'm looking through your slides right now, and I'll forward those to those that have requested it. Um, I, I love the one, uh, your lost member report, where you show by far the majority are just non-responsive. Um, and we and don't you know why, it out yeah. by answers of financial or they're unhappy. Um, we try to dig down as deep as we can to and really determine what caused the drop. And right now during it's a legislative session in Montana. Every other year our legislature meets and typically we'll take a position that doesn't make everybody happy. So we track that as well. And so far this session we've only had one drop based on a position that we've taken. But anybody have any thoughts on I mean you've got of your list here of all your drops, you know that big piece of the pie of no response. Does anybody crack that code to figure out how to pull some kind of response from people when they drop as to why? So we're all struggling with the same thing, it sounds like. All right, well, I'll send that, uh, that to everybody. Yeah, we're asking our board members to try to help us get the reasons because what we find is uh, when a member decides that they're not going to renew, um, you know, and we've sent them invoices and we've tried to call and so forth, when we as staff call, they know that 
<laughs> why we're calling. Um, so it's easier sometimes for a board member or, or an ambassador or someone else who knows them personally to just say, hey, we saw that you know, you're not part of the chamber anymore and could, can you give me the reason why? And sometimes they're more willing to do that to, a, to an outside party rather than to chamber staff. So we're, we're going to give that a try. That's a great idea. Uh, about four years ago in Billings, um, we sent out an email to all of our members who had dropped over a certain period of time and asked them to come to breakfast and kept it as a small group of no more than 10. And the promise was, we, we want to know why you dropped. We, we promise you we will not ask for you to rejoin. We just want to gather information. And surprisingly, we were able to fill about three different sessions. And people came, they shared challenges that they had. And we kept our part of the bargain and, and didn't ask them to renew, but a good portion of them wound up reaching out afterwards and just thanking us for asking the question and did wind up rejoining. So that's something we've awesome. been toying with doing again. There's a couple of thoughts here too. Um, we get questions, Hero gets questions for the we want you back kinds of letters. And we do have several examples of um, retention letters in both samples and then also under the Chamberpedia page for membership. <clears throat> There's a couple of pages. Um, surveys might be another uh, membership survey. I'm not sure if any of you are doing that, but we do have several examples here. Um, I think there might be an exit survey. Um, not sure how effective those are, but um, it's something that is definitely worth an idea. Um, a couple other thoughts, too, is ACCE has the Membership Development Division, and um, there's some great resource sharing there, um, peer calls, couple roundtable calls, and then, of course, the Membership Sales um, Conference coming up in March. Um, but you're all welcome to either you join or have your staff member um, join um, that division, and that's under Networks. And then um, divisions, and all the divisions are open to ACCE members. There's no limit. Um, and each one, each page on the division has instructions on how to sign up. Um, and if you have a staff member and you want to get them signed up, I can. you can just email Hero and we'll get you connected to Susan McGuire, who is our membership development division liaison. And if anyone has any other um, questions, you can either send them to Tenja or myself on Hero. Um, we're watching our email. If you want to, um, okay. And I see Marianne said, um, "Listen only." You're you you have you're on the phone, but it's it's in listen only mode. Christine, did you say you used an audio pin? Yes, it's pound forty six pound. And uh, Linda, let me try. Well, I think we're about. Yeah, I think we're about to wrap up. And if anybody does have any questions uh, or wants to share more information, please do so. Just send me an email, and I'll spread it around. Um, I, I am going to send an email to everybody this afternoon that reminds you to take the survey, if you wouldn't mind. I've had about 15 responses. I'd love to hear from the rest of you on future content. And also, there's a great new program that Capital One is offering, uh, Chambers Our Size, and I think it's really worth a look in terms of a revenue share opportunity and just added value to your members. So you'll get uh, some information on that this afternoon as well. And just please mark your calendars for the next meeting, February 22nd. 3 o'clock Eastern, and we'll go back to the regular call-in information. So um, so for those of you that were on the other line earlier, uh, that's the right line in February. Any last thoughts? If not, we'll unplug and get back to work. Thank you. Hey, thank thank you. Sarah, thank you. Sarah, thank you. Thank you all. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Take day. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Kenja. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. Bye-bye.